Yeah, record. Okay. All right. So we um, where last we left our story, we were in Baba Metzia, uh Yud, right? And we had finished. We had finished basically the sugya. Uh, that dealt with um, Ra'at Metzia, correct? We about, it really dealt with fall, with the statement of, of Reish Lakish. Reish Lakish said that Arba uh, Amot Shel Adam Konot Lo Bekol Makom. And we tried to attack that statement and we get various explanations. We had basically Rev Papa and Rev Sheshet are kind of the main uh, explanations. The Gemara itself tried to give an explanation. Rav Papa says that, well, it's only if it's not in a uh, reshut, uh, like not in a reshut of the, of a balabayit, but in a, but in a reshut of Rabim, it would be, you'd be able to acquire with your four amot. And that's why the paya um, didn't work. Because you couldn't you couldn't acquire a form in the Paya case because it was not because it was in a shoot of a And then Rava said uh the case of Nazikin, the reason why in our Mishnah essentially you don't acquire when you fall on the Matsya, even though you should acquire because you're for Amot, is because our Mishnah is talking about Rashut is talking about Rashut Rabim, and really the Takana that you cannot acquire with four Amos is only in the um, simtaot, right? And the, sorry, not Rav, I'm sorry, this is Rav Sheshi. And in the simtaot and in the side, uh, the end he says, side Rashuta Rabbi. Right? Rav said, just to repeat, Rav Shai, Rav Sheshi said, Amar ki tiknu Rabbanan besimta velo. Um the Lord the the Khki Rabim Kitik Olapa again Kitik Nu Rabanan the Simta the Lord Dakhu Rabi. There's not a lot of people there in the Simta. Rushus Arabim the Kadaki Rabim Lotiknu. In the Shus Rabim where there's a lot of people pushing, they don't let you acquire with your four amos. Now why does that make sense? Yeah, 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 Rachel. I mean, uh, Sarah, sorry. That's fine, whatever. <laughs> I know your name. I know your uh, name. Yeah. Uh, because the, the whole purpose here was to avoid some sort of like conflict with, between people. But if in a very crowded place, if my Arba Oma or Kona, the next person's Arba Oma or also Kona, like can create a lot of. Right, it could be a lot of overlap. conflict. There could be overlap between my Arbamot and your Arbamot. Um, right, or just that, like, you, in order to get where you're going, you're going to have to come into my Arbamot and then, like... Or you shouldn't be stopping, maybe. Or even that, you shouldn't be stopping there because it's like a thoroughfare. You shouldn't be stopping uh, and, and and acquiring things, maybe, in Rosh Hashanah, even though you, can, you can't just stand there. You're not supposed to be standing there. You're supposed to be moving. Keep Keep moving. Maybe that's also part of it. Actually, I did see a Gemara, I forget where now, but... I did see our discussion about like, oh uh, yeah, where, where did I see that? Anyway, I saw a Gemara that said, if the first person, really the first person should come, should acquire. In other words, if there's overlapping Arba Amot, I think it's in Gittin, in, in, the, in the Gemara in Gittin, it, it says that if, if two people come at the same time, well, there's never going to be the same time. There's going to be one first. And whoever came first, so his Arba Amot was... He was his first, and the other guy, it's not his Arabamos, it's my Arabamos. I was there first. So, actually, there is a way of solving conflict. But yeah, I think that's basically the idea. That makes sense because an Arabamos is in the Shusha Rabim. Either you shouldn't, you're right, there could be a lot of conflict still. And the whole point is to avoid conflict. And then it goes on and says, Baha Bakoma Kom Kaamar, Koma Kom Latu Yemai. So, why did Rish Lakish say Koma Kom if all he really meant was? In the Simta Alt, says La Tuyetzi De Rishus Arabi. Now this is weird because, like, if he hadn't said Kol Makom, I could have just said 
what Reish Lakish meant was in Simta Alt and Side Rishut Rabim, the size of Shut Rabim. I could have made that be his statement. Why do we have to say that Bekoma Ko meant to include the Tzide Rishut Rabim? What was my Havamina not to include the Tzide? What's the difference between Tzide Rishut Rabim and, and the Simta Alt? Shouldn't his statement just, he said, we call Makom. We could just say, ah, what he meant, call Makom, he meant those two places. Why do we have to say, no, he meant one of the places. And when he said call, he meant also another place. It's very, very strange. Why, why, why is it? It's as though the two kinds of places are different. And we wouldn't, right? You hear my question? Any, any thoughts? Well, what about like what about Rashuta Rabim at night? Do your Abra Amos work in Rashuta Rabim at night when nobody's around? What the, what's the Havamita that would make you think no? Just well, because we said it doesn't work in Rashuta, it doesn't work in Rashuta Rabim. Period. Well, it did, right. It, I mean, I think it depends on like how you, to what extent the like explanation of this as being about, like to what extent is this formal and to what extent is this practical? Right? Is it just that there is like some rules about how Kinyan works and in Rishuda Rabim, these are kind of the limitations? Or is it that like, well, it's just impractical. Like in principle, your Arba Amot are like can be Kona. But then there's this weird situation you come into where like oh in a public place where there's lots of people going back and forth lo and behold that doesn't work because then you might if, if it's that if it's like the ikar of the thing is that yeah your arba mode art can be kona then you might say well when there's nobody there it should work at three in the morning it should work right or you could say it's a formal like you're saying it's a formal rule that just says once we've made the rule that's the rule and we don't make divisions right so you could say either way. I think you could say either way. Anyway, my thought was maybe the idea of Sidi Rishuta Rabim is 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 bringing in that that non formal definition. Is saying the Simta Ot is a physical place. Sidi Rishuta Rabim. There may be sometimes there isn't Sidi Rishuta Rabim. Maybe it expands and contracts depending on the crowd. In other words, Sidi Rishuta Rabim is like a place that depend is dependent on circumstances. That's what I was thinking. So like when Ra when 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 Reish Lakish said uh he he really meant just Rashut Rabim. And then why did he say or sorry just this just the simtaot which is a physical place an alleyway but when he said he meant to say in any place that would be like a simta in a temporary occurrence. And, and, and that would be the C day. That would be the C day. That's what I was thinking. And that would be the C day is like the classic. Yeah, Aaron? You're okay. Aaron? Oh. So the C day might be like the classic example of something that's circumstantially. The, 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 the Arab Amos could work there. Anyway, okay, that, that's just my last thought on that piece of the Gemara. Now we have this whole other, uh, we have another, we have, we have a toast fault here. So we have two toast faults that I want to do today, basically. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, Sarah, you want to read the first toast fault? It's on the previous page on Yud, Amud Aleph, Arba Amot, Konot. Sure. Um, but wait, just hold on, hold on one second. Okay, all right, I'm back. Okay. okay. Go for it. Arvar amot konot lo b'chol makom, ve'im tomar be'elu na'arot, the Amar Gabe Gonev Kis Beshabat, Hayam Megarir, Vigotse Patur, Patur de Isur Shabbat, the Isur Gnevash, in Shabbat Bainke Achad. 
וכאמר, אי אף כאי לרשות הרבים, איסור שבת איכא איסור גניבה ליכא. ועמי היי ארבע אמות קונות לו. אוקיי, so you might say that based on the סוגיה אין כתובות, Yeah, so and that Sergio talks about a case where you steal some, you basically pickpocket someone on Shabbat. Um, well, and, it's not pickpocket. It's not pickpocket. It's stealing a, a purse, but it's not like a pickpocket. It's not in the sense that it's in the Rosh Hashanah Rabim. It's not, yeah. it's probably in his house. No, I just meant stealing a purse. Yeah, yeah okay. So right. you steal a purse. Um, and then you, but not, yeah, not in a public place because otherwise it doesn't work, right? You steal it, you steal, you steal it and then you do a huzzah, I think is the point, right? Well, wait, 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 very careful here. We got to, I spent a lot of time on, on this migarer. What does migarer mean? I was confused about what it meant. All right. I, I did not spend as much time on it as you did. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. As much time as I should have, perhaps. <laughs> so I was confused about what it meant. Uh, yeah. So, also in the context in Ketubot, I was confused. Yeah. So what? So somebody, can anybody offer some light? Maybe? To drag? Drag, yeah. It means drag. To, to imply or implicate or bring along. Like you, well, that's not. That's the metaphoric meaning of the term. Like but here it means literally drag. Oh, so he's dragging it literally across the ground. Yeah. Is our key point and there's not there's he's not lifting it up. Oh, exactly, Jacob. Right. That is exactly the key point. He's not lifting it up. If he would lift it up, then that would be acquiring. And that's like real hot to add, right? No, 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 no. He's, we're talking about in the house. Okay. We're in the house. You, you broke into this guy's house and you lift up this purse. Now, the minute you lift it up, you acquired it. You lifted it. Hagba'a works in all places. Actually, I have a, this is like a, we have a mini shiur now on, 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 on Kinyan, actually. On Kinyan uh, of, of Mashiach. We were talking about this before with donkeys and stuff. But... So, he's, so he didn't lift it up. Instead, what did he do? He's Megarer Vyotse. So let's get the case. So Jacob, what's the case? What's he doing? So he's grabbing this wallet of this, this purse of someone else and dragging it into a different type of property. Exactly. He's dragging it from a private dwelling to Rishusa Rabbi. Now that's an Isser of Shabbos. And it's also, but when does he acquire it? He acquires it when he drags it into the Rishusa Rabbi. So he did right, the right. stealing and the thievery mm -hmm. at the same time. I have a question. Is it, is it that he's, he's dragging it until the door and then he's picking it up at the door like why is he acquiring it once he leaves the house or do you just acquire because it because drag, because, it outside of the because machine okay you, you, excellent <laughs> question and this is what i investigated um mishika works does not work so i should say uh in in a in a rishusa yachid you can't the mishika that he does in, in the house oh, that's great. it does nothing he has to take it, and I tell you even more, Mashiach doesn't work in Rishus Harabim either. But going, well, we'll, we'll have to see exactly what. Going from one to the, actually, let, yeah, it's complicated. It's definitely complicated. Uh, I sent, act, actually, what I sent out is the sources just now. Why don't you, did everybody get that? Maybe open it up for a minute. I, I, I've become, uh, all right. I said, right before the section called Anim Becharara, Anim Mapech Becharara, I put in a new section called Kenyan Meshicha. You see that? And, um, 
Here, look, look here. Actually, let's just skip to Halacha Dalit, I think. You see where I bring that? Hilchos, Rambam Hilchos Mechira, Perak Dalit, Halacha Dal. Give me a thumbs up if you found that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Max, you got it? Yeah. Okay. So look there. It says, it says, uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't skip anything, but I'll, 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 we'll, maybe we'll go back to this. Devar uh, Haniknebe Meshicha. Im haya birishus harabim umashko halokeach lirishuto o lesimta kevin shetziu miktsasa hefes mirishus harabim kana. So if it was in the rishus harabim and you brought it into your own area or to a simta, then those are areas where acquisition can take place. We actually kind of learned this. This is actually very interesting. In other words, you can't acquire something in Rishu Sarabi. Only in the Simtal. That's what we just learned about the Arab Amos. You have to bring it into a Simta or your own thing. Um, even if you, and then it says, even if you do ha part of it, which is a, a, another topic. Um, what about if you bring it into Rishu Sarabi? Do you acquire? Maybe not, because the Shusarabim is like a place where you don't acquire. So, so let's just keep that in mind. Um, I'm just seeing if there's any other Rambam here. Hmm. Here, look at Gimel. He says, "Mesira eno kone ela bi Rishusarabi. Mesira dafka works in Rishusarabi. Ubachatzer she eno shashnehem. U Meshicha eno kone ela besimta." All right, this is very important. That's really actually the Gimel is really the important one. Gimel, like Gimel really sets it out. Hagbaha works everywhere. Mesira only works with Shusarabi. And Meshicha only works in a Simta or a Chatzir Shashnehem, which is like a courtyard, some kind of court, a shared courtyard. It has to be a private area. You can't acquire in Rishus Rabbi. All right, let's go back to our to our Tosfot. Um, so again, Gonav Kis B'Shabes Haya Migarer V'Yotze Patur. Why the Isser Shabbat when he brought it out the Isser. Geneva, when he brought it out. No, I'm reading this wrong. Wait, I'm jumping around. My my, my eyes are fooling me here. Wait, the Amar Gabe Gona Vakis Vishabat, Haya Migareva Yotse Patur, the Sir Shabbos for Isser Geneva, Bain Kechat, because mm -hmm. he, he acquires them both at the same time. He knows he does Shabbos and he does the acquisition at the same time. But I still, based on our look at the Rambam, I still that's wrong. I just that's wrong. So that's the next line. So so Sarah, who is not Rachel, read the next line now. <laughs> the, where I just stopped, read the next words. It's going to help Noam. Um, the the Kaamar e afke lereshut haravim isor shabbat ika isor gneva leka. Oh, that's the Rambam. Right, that's a Rambam. How so could you he, have said this? How could the Gemara have said that? That you are patur. The Gemara then, I think it's the Ka'ama. The Gemara then again goes on to say that no, you're wrong. There is Isser Shabbos, but there isn't Isser Geneva because there's no Kenyan. Because Shabbos doesn't require Kenyan. Shabbos just requires moving the item to it from one reshoot to another. So there is no. I mean, I, I, by the way, I, there's a there's a concept here that is uh, I have not we've not expressed. What is the concept? Why should you be patur if both of them come at the same time? Kamle b'deravamine. Exactly. Kimle b'deravamine. Another right. We we you only get punished once, so you won't get punished for you'll get the kanas, let's say, of Geneva, of, of having to pay double. 
the, the Rambam does point out that if the item is still, or, or whatever, or even having to pay back money, you, you won't have to be punished for stealing if you're being punished for Shabbos with ski, with death. So, right, exactly. So you only get one. But here, the Gemara says, what are you talking about? You only get one. You didn't do Geneva because you went into Rishus Arabim. So go on, go go on, Rachel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Sarah, I keep, I, I, my, so my brain is something going on today. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay, right? So how can, how can the Gemara possibly say this? Because it, it might it instead be that his Arba Amot do the Kenyan. Well, but am I? Exactly. Right. In, in the other house. Words. And so then. So, what's the question? They're not single action. They're two separate actions. No, 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 no. Don't go, don't, don't go so far. We just got through saying that the that the dragging didn't work because it was a shusarabim. The dragging he didn't acquire. Ah, the stealing he did do, but the dragging he didn't do. So now, now it's Tosus' question. Vamai says Tosus. Ha arba amos konotlo. So Jacob, what does it mean? So even if he didn't lift it, it should be within its arba amot, and that should be not for an acquisition. And therefore, therefore, both Ethereum would be coming at the same time. Exactly. The minute he went into Rishus Arabim with the item, he acquired it by Arba Amos, and he he did the, the stealing did occur at that moment because the Arba Amos, and it also was the Hotzah at that moment. Ah, the Arba Amos doesn't work in the house, but it should work in the Rishus Arabim. You, you got it, Sarah? Yeah, I'm just, yeah, no, but I got it, I got it. Makes sense? It's actually a very simple question. Once we got all the, once we understand the underlying halachot, then we can read the tosos. It's really hard to understand the tosos if you don't know the halachot. That's why I brought you these rambams. In other words, uh, Meshicha works, do, sorry, does not work when you go from Urashut Hayachid to Urashut Rabim. And therefore, it didn't it didn't require. And then tells us, yeah, but it should have acquired because of the Arba Amot. And then we have two issues coming at the same time. Kim Lebe the Rabbi Mine only follow the stringent ruling, and therefore he'd only get death and wouldn't have to pay the money. Okay, so go on. But Yesh Lomar, Tosos answers. Yesh Lomar, the Begneva Lotik Nurabanan Dekane, Elad Bimitia. No, no, no. Wait. Uh, so we. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. El, right. So. Well. So there are different name? rules for a Kenyan of a Metsia, basically, than for for what we how we talk about Kenyan for Geneva. Um. Um. Because exactly. Metsia, Why does that make sense? I mean, it makes kind of because sense. because because. Right, because I get well. So he says about Ubmetzia de Loli Natsuya would get Mishum Iguna, right? So the, these two things are um, the for the Metzia. It like we can we're concerned about people fighting over it, and for the get we're concerned about Aguna. So right. th- those have different rules for Kenya. So we have no. I mean, it's not just different rules; it's that they made a Takana for that. I mean, why did they have to, the rabbis were worried about those things, so they made Takana. They were not very much worried about this ganav. They did not start making takanot for ganavim and what they're when they acquire things. In other words, it's very. Why should they make a takana that the ganav acquires and therefore is patur? You know, in such a case, they don't need to worry about the ganavim. Yeah. Yeah. In other words. The rabbis don't make tekanot for rashayim. They make tekanot for normal people, not for ganavim. So that's Tosa's first answer. Then he gives a second answer. Okay, but it, we could just follow Rav Sheshit and then this whole question wouldn't be... Wouldn't be a question. Why? Be a question. Because for Rav Sheshit, you can't, your Arba Amot are not Makne, you can't be Kone with Arba Amot in Rashida Rabim. In Rashida Rabim. 
Oh, exactly. That was Rav Sheshit. So what does Rav Papa say, though? Rav Papa says... Um, top of the page. Yeah. Rav Papa Amar Kitiknu Le Rabbanan Arba Amot Be'alma Besade De Bala Ba'it Lo Tiknu Le Rabbanan. So, yeah, so the in only general... Exception- there's there's an exception for Peya. No, the only exception is no, the only exception is for Rishut Harabi. The only place that Arba Amos doesn't work is Rishut Abalabayat in somebody else's house. Your Arba Amos don't don't exist when you're in somebody else's house, but everywhere else, like Rishut Rabim, they do exist. Now we talked last week about whether it's really a machloka between them. We saw that yeah. the Rambam Paskin both opinions together, and we said, well, they kind of fit together. They don't have to be. Tosfos here is clearly understanding them as a machloket, as 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 Rav Papa as saying, yeah, Rishus Rabim works everywhere works except the owner's house. And Rav Sheshi says, no, it don't. Rishus Rabim also doesn't work. Only a simta ot work. So Tosfos is saying, if you hold like Rav Sheshi, not like Rav Papa, then you're dragging it into Rishus Rabim. They also doesn't. The Arba almost don't work there, so the Gemara makes sense. What's confusing? Right. Okay. So that's it. What was confusing? The only thing that was confusing about this Gemara was that he, the, this Tosos, is that he quoted like the Havamina and then the Terutz. And usually Tosos just quotes like the Terutz, the final opinion. But here he quoted that you might say he's Patur, and then he says, no, he's not Patur because they didn't happen because whatever. Anyway, so what's the, what are we, what's, what are we learning out from this Tosfot? We're learning out from this Tosfot what? That, that, um, that that Gemara over there makes sense. <laughs> that that you didn't acquire, that that Gemara must be holding either like Rav Sheshit, that uh, Rishus Rabim doesn't kone, or that that Gemara has, or that the Takana doesn't apply to a Ganavim. And I think that's an important principle, you know, in an ethical kind of system, in an ethical kind of thinking, that we do, that the Kanot of Chazal don't apply to... Um, don't apply to, uh, you know, a criminal cases. We don't use, the criminals can't use the Tekanot. Which is interesting. It's like almost like time of the Tekana. Like, it's a big question. Do you, do you is a Tekana, you know, the, the, he says the reason of the Tekana is that people don't fight. Oh, that doesn't apply to Ganavim Maybe they're fighting anyway. I mean, they're stealing. In other words, he's really taking the idea that the Takana has a certain purpose, and therefore it doesn't apply in cases where that purpose doesn't apply. Um, now, what is the time? I'm just wondering if we should look at this Rambam, if we look at the rest of what I sent. Yeah, let's just take a quick look at this other Rambam that I sent. So if you if you look at the Rambams that I sent you, we read already two of them. Um, there's just an interesting uh, internal contradiction in these Rambams. Here, Noah, when you read the first Rambam that I sent, uh, Halacha Gimel in Hilchos Mechira, in Parak Gimel. Sure. Um, the one we just read before, right? Masira in Akona, right? No, 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 the one before that. You said Gimel? Oh, in Parak Gimel, sorry. Um Hasfina O Ilve Yev Sharla Hagbiha A the Yesh be Meshikata Torah Gadol the Ainim Shechet Ella Le Rabim Lohi Trihua Meshika Ella a Niknet be Messira the Hen Kol Kayotze Beze. Um, uh, okay, so a ship, since it's impossible to raise it, uh, and in Pulling it, there's like uh, pulling it is very very difficult, and it's only pulled by multiple people. Uh, uh, then, so uh, it, in order to make a kinyan on it, we don't require mashicha. Rather, we uh, rather kinyan is through masira. Right, sort of like we treat it like an animal, even though it's a if it's an item, really. Okay. Go uh, on. Ve'im amar lo hamocher lech meshoch 
וקנה, וקנה, אינו קונה הספינה עד שימשכנה כולה, ויוציאנה מכל המקום שהייתה בו, שהרי הקפיד המוכר שלא יקנה זה, אלא במשיכה. And if the seller says, uh, go, um, do Mashiha, and acquire mm-hmm. it, then the person does not acquire the ship uh, unless they've done Mashiha to all of it uh, and has fully removed the ship from every place where it was previously. Because- right, now, so the ship occupied these eight meters and the ship was eight meters long. You got to move it to the next eight meters. The whole ship has to move. Yeah, and that's because the mocher is just very particular. That, right. Uh, that's because the mocher said, do Mashiach. He said he's not. he doesn't want any other kind of Kenyan. Okay, we got a, a crazy seller. He wants Mashiach, but the point is that you got to do the whole ship. And then then there's the sections that we read already. Halakha Sorry, Gimel again. What does Masira mean practically again? Um, um, give him the rope, I guess. The rope that you pull it with. And Mashiach, Mashiach would be actually pulling the ship a full distance. So like, you're saying Mashiach and Masira are the same action, just one is successful. No, Masira is just holding the rope. I hand you the rope and you hold it. Okay. And you, you just the, the fact that I give you over the rope and now you, we learned that and that was kind of what we learned about the animal. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, now, now I guess just read again the next two halachas. מסירה אינה קונה אלא ברשות הרבים ובחצר שאינה של שניהם והמשיכה אינה קונה אלא בסמטה או בחצר של שניהם והגבהק קונה בכל מקום. That we read. You don't need to translate. And the next one. דבר הנקנה במשיכה אם היה ברשות הרבים ומשקו הלוקח לרשותו או לסמטה, כיוון שהוציא מקצת החפץ מרשות הרבים, קנה. All right, so doesn't, so this, do you see the contradiction now? Doesn't this halakha dalit contradict the case of the ship? The underlying parts. Oh, you're saying the difference with, oh, between removing the entire ship versus just removing a part of the ship? Yeah. Before he was very makpi to tell us you have to move the whole ship. And now in halakha dalit he says, as long as some of it goes into the Rishu, Kevan Shotzi Miksasa Hefetz Mirishu Sarabim into your private area, Kana. Why is that? So, right, it doesn't make sense really. Well, for this ship, is it talking about specifically dragging it to like? to your oh, that's own property or just dragging it and is there a level or, or pulling it and, it, it and is there a level that you acquire pulling even a shoot of a robin but pulling from into your own property you only need part of it without moving it fully I don't know if I'd say that clearly. Uh, well, Meshika only works in a Simta or in a Chatser. How does that work with a boat? What do you do with a boat? Where is it? I, I guess you, you have to pull it into like a canal. I don't know. Like what's it, What would be a Simta for a boat? Got it. Got it, it would have to be not a Rishusa Rabbi. It would have to be presumably. I understand what you were saying. You're saying a very nice idea. You're saying... Maybe if you're in a Shusarabim, then Mashiach is a bigger requirement. And maybe when you're pulling it from a Shusarabim to a private, then a little bit is enough. Mm-hmm. The only problem is that in the Shusarabim, he clearly says that it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Except in a Simta. 
So maybe he means, so maybe the boat case is like a simta. But still, shouldn't it be enough that you bring a little bit of it in? Why did you bring it all? Mm. Into your, in, you know, are you saying simta is different from your own reshut? Maybe in a simta, you have to do the whole thing. And if you bring it into your reshut, then it's enough of a little bit. That's a, that's a possible answer, right? In a simta, you have to do that with the boat. So look at the Magid Mishnah. So here, I'll read the Magid Mishnah maybe, because I didn't give you time to read it ahead of time. He says like, um, he quotes the Rambam, as soon as you did a little bit of the Chavetz, you got it. Amar Avraham, that's the Ravid. Um, uh, nearly, he, he, he rejects this idea. He says, no, you have to do the whole thing. And as he says, he just rejects this din of this partial. Now, that, now that's, that's v'chule. That's the end of the rival. Now says the Magid Mishnah. He says, actually, the Rambam also agrees that it, it doesn't work. Kishmuel. What we just read was a pair of gimel by the ship. Shahani Mili. In other words, yep. In other words, the, the Ragged is saying that the ship example shows that the Ramam also agrees that it's not the halacha. So what is he saying here? So he says, El Shahusover the Hani Mili. These words only this is all these words only apply It's only when it's in a place where Mashika works. There's no difference. Aval hacha taima, but the reason here is taima chrina hu shezek far mashcha kulo el shahayta bereshut sheein hamashicha moila bo. So he says, when we said that only a part is enough, what he means is like this: that the that the item was in. If you go go away. The item was in a, a place where Mashiach doesn't work, like Rosh Hashanah That makes sense. The boat was, let's say, in the in a big Rosh Hashanah water. I don't know, whatever that would be. And you're pulling it there doesn't isn't called Mashiach because Mashiach doesn't work in that location. Mashiach doesn't work in such a in, in Rosh Hashanah So. He says like this, if you're pulling the boat in a Rishus Arabim and you're, that Mashiach doesn't work. So now you pull the whole boat many, many uh, meters, enough to move the whole boat to a new place. But you still didn't acquire it because it was Rosh Hashanah. Now, as you start bringing the boat into your dock, as soon as the front end of the boat comes in, well, you already from this, you you've done the mashicha, and now it's in a place where it can acquire. The mashicha didn't work up until now because it was in the wrong kind of a place. Basically, what he's saying is there's two dinim. One is the, that you din that you need mashicha. You need the physical act of Mashiach. That physical act is a full movement of 100% of the item. 100% of the item has to move from place to place. But then there's a limitation. Mashiach only works in certain places. Kenyan or Kenyan only works. Kenyan Mashiach only works. So once you've done the Mashiach, now as long as some of the boat is in a place where Kenyan works, it works. Now, does that fit to our case? That's my only question. Does that fit to our case? In other words, the case of the thief. He's pulling it. He's dragging it. 
in a place inside the house, he's dragging that purse in a place where Mashiach doesn't work <clears throat> because it's not his own, his property. And now he pulls it into um, well, what did Tosfot say? It just says Vigotse. It sounds like he leaves the house. He just he, you're right, he just goes a little bit into the Shuzarabi. So he's obviously not gonna acquire. Ah, so it's not really a guy. obviously not gonna acquire because it's in any way anyway Rishusarabi. He wouldn't acquire when it first got there. Okay, yeah, it's not a kasha. It's not a kasha. It fits, it fits nicely. So it's just I just thought it's interesting. I guess we're just explaining the contradiction in the Rambam. Since we happen to be looking at this Rambam, so the Magid tells us this this, 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 this answer. Um the only trouble I have is if you look at Halakha Gim Halakha Bet, Rambam Hilchos Geneva Perak Gimel. Last thing that I brought, Halakha Bet, he says, um, Yeah, I'll skip a little bit where I underlined. You see that? Osha Ganav Kis Bishabat, Rayami Garuro, Achotzi, Mirishusa Balim, Shai Shehi Rishusa Yachit. Lirishusa Rabim Vaavdo. Rabbim points out that you have to lose it because if you didn't lose it, you'd give it back. Vaavdo Sham, it got lost there. Hareze Patur Minatashlumim. Why? She Isr Shabbos, Isr Geneva, the Hezek. The Hezek is not important. Isr Geneva by Inkechat. I don't understand. I don't understand. What what is there Geneva and Isser Shabbos comes together? Isser Shabbos, Isser Geneva, Baim Keachad, he says. But you just brought it from the house to the Rishus Rabim, and the Rishus Rabim doesn't come it. What's your answer? Rambam didn't read his own halachas. Just a rabbi doesn't count it. And he just goes on to say, but if he lifted it up in the house, then he would acquire it, and then he would be chayev to pay. Fine. But I don't understand this. He's quoting the Gemara wrong. The Gemara should, is saying, no, you're, you're not chayev. You, you are chayev because you didn't do, you did the Geneva first. There's no Kenyan in Rishis Rabbi. Well, the the Magi Mishnah explained how I, I want to make sure I get this right. That um The Magi Mishnah basically just said that if he dragged it in the house, if he dragged the purse in the house for a long time, then the minute he gets out of the house, he doesn't have to drag it the full size of the purse, it'll acquire it instantly. No, no, Which no, actually works very case. nicely. That explains yeah. why it comes instantly. The moment he pulls it out, the moment is he's, he's over Shabbos and he's over Geneva. But but still, it's Rosh Hashanah. The, the truth is, the Magi Mishnah is not no, so. No, no, no. Wait, my the, Ma the Magi Mishnah is talking about pulling the ship from the Rishut Harabim. Yeah, pulling the ship from the Rishut Harabim into the Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, yeah. So, not, course, so, so, so that's, not, so that's not the same as the purse. The purse is the Rashida Yahid. Exactly. Rabbi. Exactly. Exactly. It's not the same. So it's not going to help us really. We well, still have our question. You could just say, well, you could just say that the same logic would apply. Like as in the Magin mission is telling us what happens when you start pulling the ship in a place where pulling isn't Mahania and that Rashid. And what happens is as so as soon as you start taking it into another Rashid. <laughs> then Kenyan does happen. And like, maybe we could apply that kind of in reverse to the purse. You're taking the purse in someone's home or Rashida Yahid, and that's not Mo'il. It, it doesn't work there. I don't know. Yeah, but also Rashida Rabi doesn't work. It would, yeah, it would obviously it, be helpful. The Magid is not going to help us. I just brought the Magid because I was just uh, interested in explaining Kashas in the Rambam. 
And now I have another Kasha in the Rambam. Could it be could it be the Rishuda Rabbim doesn't usually work, but it does work in this atypical case where you're taking it from another Rashut where it doesn't work? Like could, no, like, yeah, I hear work. you. I hear you. I want to simply I, I have you a very simple in the answer. Rabim, but it could work if you bring it into the Rashuda Rabim from another Rashut that doesn't work. But that's exactly where he says it doesn't work. No, it has to be has to be into a Rashut that it works. Yeah, but he also but he also told us that it wouldn't that it wouldn't work with the ship in the Rashuda Rabim, and he we found out a way of pulling it out of the Rashuda Rabim and it still worked. Oh well, yeah. What did we say? What did we say about the ship? Keep going. Yeah. What? Did, how do we answer the ship? Because it started off in a reshoot where it doesn't work, but then we and pulled it through a reshoot where, where it, it did. Work. So and what was that reshoot? It was a reshoot yachid, or oh, okay. a sigma, or a, a simta. I mean, right. right. So Jacob. So I, I don't know if this works with how the Rambam usually writes. I'm not familiar enough with the Rambam knows how specific he can be, but when we're saying, when he's saying Rashida Rabim, could he be talking about Side Rashida Rabim here? Exactly. 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 That's what I was thinking. The Rambam, when he's just, when he says he's talking about Side Rashida Rabim or, or, or a Simta Alt. Because a Simta, even though we call it a Simta, we can also call it Rashida Rabim because he's in the world of Shabbos here. I mean, it's not in Hilchas Shabbos, but it's in the world of Shabbos in the sense that he's contrasting it with Rishus Yachid and Rishus Rabim, and then anything is a Rishus Rabim that's not a Rishus Yachid, and he doesn't mean to say that it's Dafka Rishus Rabim. He means to say that it's a Rishus that's not a Rishus Yachid, and that it is a Rishus Rabim. So he means the Simta. He, he's slipping into Shabbat vocabulary rather than Kinyan vocabulary. Exactly, exactly. It's Rashuda Rabim for the purposes of Hotza'ah, but not for Kenyan. Yes, exactly. And this is my theory about the Rambam in general, that a lot of the misunderstandings that people have in the Rambam, and the, or not, I shouldn't say, a lot of the kashas, the contradictions, are because they don't understand how he's using, they don't notice the, the subtleties of his linguistic usage. He's, he's, he's using the words in some of his different ways. And of course, it's dangerous. You can't just do this. You can't just say, "Oh, he meant something different here." But here, I think it does mean that. I think it, you know, if you're sensitive and you read all of the Rambams on a particular sugya, you can figure out usually why, how it all fits together. And anyway, so that was my that was only my point that that he's talking about Yechid Ebed All right, we finished now this topic of <laughs> of of Hotza and Shabbos and in different Rishuyot. And now we have to get into the topic of Ani Mehapech Beharara. And that's the next toast fault. Um, so we go back to Baba Metzia. Actually, really not to Baba Metzia, because before I don't want even I don't even not sure if I even want to read the one in Baba Metzia together. Really, I want to do it in Kedushin. So let's go to Kedushin. So this is what I what you all prepared probably for last week, and now we'll finally get to it. Um, and this is this uh, Gemara in Nun Tet in Kedushin, and there's the Mishnah. Um, we'll try to. The truth is, I told you to read the whole thing. Let's. I want to try to a little bit mitzamtsem because of time. Uh, Max, maybe you want to read the uh, beginning of the Mishnah. All right. Homer le chabero, se be kadesh le isha plonit, the halach for kid sha latsmo, the kudesh at lesheni. The hen homer le isha, hareat the kudesh at le, la har shloshim yom, uva her bektisha betok shloshim yom, the kudesh at lesheni. But Israel a kohen. I stop there, stop there, stop there. Okay. Right. So, Trent, let's explain. Yes. So, if one person says to another person, um, go and uh, do Kiddushin for me with this particular woman, and he went and he did it for himself, um, she's, she's Mikudesha to him, the second man. Right. And Except that he was... Uh... 
you know, he wasn't such a nice guy. He didn't do the job. He, he married her to himself instead of to the other to the first guy who sent him. But but it works. Mm-hmm. Now, what do you remember? If you read the Gemara, what does the word "vahalach" indicate to us in the Mishnah? It, it has to do. I can't remember all the specifics, but it it it, it is related to the issue of whether or not he did the kiddushin where he was told to do it or in some other place. Uh, not exactly, not exactly, no, not exactly. Halach, anybody else? What, what, what? Halach baramaut. Halach baramaut. Exactly. The, 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 the halach is coming to tell us that this is a ramaut kind of thing to do. This is not uh, proper. This is a trickery. He shouldn't do this. In other words, it, it might. It sounds just like the like Mishnah is completely amoral about this question. You, you do it, it works. But like a shot, do it every time you want. Do it every time. So the Gemara says, no, no, no. Halach means he was being tricky, and you should, and you're forbidden to do this. But if you did it, it works. Um. Okay. So that's the that's the first part of the Gemara. Um, there's an interesting Rashi here. I mean, there's an interesting Rashi here. The first, ra- the, the sorry, the second Rashi on the Gemara. Um, because the Gemara is bothered by the question of why our Mishnah says the Chavero, like you said, to another person, to his friend, and why does another Mishnah in the first parak, I believe the um, oh no, the second parak, I think second parak. That it says lishlucho. Um, so look at this Rashi, uh, Max. Can you read that Rashi? It's a, we're just sort of a Rashi in the I'm not reading the Gemara, but just that Rashi. Tikatani haomer lishlucho. Oh, okay. Seve kadeshli isha ploni b'makom ploni v'halach v'kitcha b'makom acher enam mekudeshet. So if he said to him, "Go and, and do kiddushin for this particular woman in this particular place." And he went and he did it in a different place. She's not considered mikudeshet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maishna hatam tenakat lashon shlichut. So what is what is particular about 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 this place that we've chosen the language of shlichut? Yeah, well, right. I, I would translate a little different. Why, why did what maishna hatam? Like what changed? That over there we use the we nakat we use the language of la sh, of shlichut shalchol l'shem kach, and then you go on vahacha. Okay. Um, uh, shalchol l'shem kach vahacha nakat chab ro shelo shalchol l'shem kach. Oh. Uh, okay. So. There, Ella, wait, keep reading, keep reading, read to the oh, end. Oh, oh, oh. Ella, im yizda menlo b'makom ploni derech etzla. Darach etzla. Oh, maybe we Darach. read this last time. We read this last time, actually. Um, da- oh, no, we didn't. I-, I read it with somebody else, sorry. Darach. This is not derech, this is darach. What does darach mean? What's it mean, derech and darach? Derech is a way. So what is darach? To, to walk or to go? Or... Yeah, exactly. To walk. So go back. So go back. So so in in one language we in one place we use shlichut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it seems to be saying that there, um, it was when he was sent specifically for that purpose. But here, where we chose Chavero, he wasn't sent specifically for that purpose, but just told that if he was to run into her, he should go to her. And exactly, exactly. So there's two. He's saying like this: there's two kinds of shlichim. There's a shliach where it's you're telling him you have to go and do this job, and then there's another shliach where it's like if you happen to be. In New York, could you get me 
you know, if you happen to be at Macy's, could you get me a cashmere scarf? You know, I like the cashmere scarves at Macy's. Now, I just said, if you happen to be there, get me that thing. I don't have any expectation that you're necessarily ever going to be in Macy's. I mean, I hope you will be. He said, I'm going shopping in New York, you know. And I said, well, if you're in Macy's, could you get me this cash, get me a cash shirt? So for all I know, you will never go. But if I tell you, please go to America now, go to Macy's and buy me a cashmere shark, a scarf. That's a shliach. If I just say, um, if you happen to be in Macy's, then you're just a chaver. So it's a level of formality for the for the the or an expectation of the level of trouble you're expecting the other person to undergo. This exactly. Is, yes. If, exactly. If there, by the way, if you're there, marry this this you know betroth me to this woman versus please go and do this for me. Exactly. Um, a shli exactly. If, if, and almost you could say that if he did marry, in other words, if I t if I if he did marry the woman to himself instead of to the sender. Then, if it was just a, a sent as a friend, then maybe you know, maybe you know, if I send somebody to go to, to go to Macy's and you know, and he, I still I say I don't send him. I just send him. A, if you're having a Macy's, could you get me a cashmere scarf? You know, and he go and he goes to New York and he comes back with a cashmere scarf and he says, "Oh, this is actually I didn't buy it for you. This is for me." Uh, you know, so I would be. He's like he's like a kind of a not nice, not a very good friend. But I may have, in fact, if I had seen a, a cashmere scarf in Jerusalem, I might buy it because I don't even know that he's going to buy it there. So he didn't really cause me any loss. Anyway, I'm just pointing out that, that Rashi, I just like that Rashi because he explains two different kinds of shliach or, or one that's really a shliach and one that's not really a shliach. It's not called a shliach when you tell your friend, when you go visit someplace, could you give me, could you bring me back a souvenir? You just mean to say, if he happens to see a nice souvenir, you get it, but you're not telling him le shem kach. Okay. That's a side point. Now, let's jump down. The Gemara then goes on. I'll, I'll just summarize the Gemara. The Gemara just asks, it talks about whether it's Ramaut, and it says um, it is Ramaut. Uh, in, bo in both cases, really, it's Ramaut. And then it brings stories of people who did um, marry people to themselves instead of the person who they were supposed to marry the person to. And in each case, they said, well, there was no way it would have worked. There's no way she would have agreed to this guy or that the parents would have agreed. So I just, you know, married and married myself. But but, but in other words, in reality, you should do what you're told. And you shouldn't marry them to yourselves. And it's not called a, you're not a righteous person if you do that, even if it works. And now we'll get to this case of um, uh, of Rav Giddel. Here. So here, maybe Max, you'll continue right in the middle of the page. The first one online is Achrina. And then the fourth word is Rav Gidel. Uh, okay. Uh, Rav Gidel haba mehapech bahahiara. Azal Rabbi Abba Zabna. Azal Rav Gidel kable uh, Rabbi Zera. Azal Rabbi Zera bekable Rabbi Yitzchak napcha. Amar le him ten adchi ale la regel. Kisalek Ashkache Amarle Ani Mehapech Bacharara Uvachar Benatla Hemnu Mai. Should I translate or should I keep going? You can keep going once you got this far. Keep going. Okay. Amarle Nikwarasha. The Elamar Mai Tama Abadhafi. Amarle Lo Havayadana. All right, period. So you can stop there. It goes on, but I, I got, it's enough for us. Mm -hmm. So what's the story? So the story is, is that Rav Gittel was trying to acquire some land. Like he was in the process of trying to acquire some land and Rabbi Abba came and bought it. 
And mm -hmm. Rav Gittel complained to, to Rabbi Zera, and Rabbi Zera told, told or complained about it to Rav Yitzhak Napcha. And he said, wait until, um, you know, it's time for, the, for, for everyone to come for the regal. And when he came up, that is, uh, Rabbi Rabbi Abba. Abba. yes, um, they, they found, he found him and, and, and said to him, in the case of, a, of an Ani who's mehapech b'charara, and another person comes and takes it away, what, 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 do we, what do we say about it? Or what's the halacha? And he responded, we call him a rasha. And so he responded, well, why did you do this to me then? Or why did you behave this way? And he said to him- Not to I me, to Rav Gidl. Right. right. Well, I didn't know. Exactly. And he says, I didn't know. So in other words, he agrees. There's no argument. I'm not supposed to do this. Somebody is mahapech uh, be'ara. He's, he's trying to buy some land. You don't stop him. Um, all right. Let's take a break here for a few minutes, for five minutes. And then we'll come back and look at Rashi and Tosfa.
Okay, everybody come back. We're, we have our work cut out for us. Our, our work of pleasure, I hope. I mean, you know, I think intellectual satisfaction is the best kind. I mean, not to not that I denigrate a good ice cream, but uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so okay, so we saw the we saw the Gemara Gittel, Rav uh, Rav Gittel, and even uh, Rav Abba, who did the dastardly deed, admitted that he wouldn't have done it had he known. Um, and then there's this Rashi. Um, here, uh, here, Josie, why don't you just read this one Rashi here, or two Rashis? Ani Pech Becharara. Sure, just give me a second. I'm working with multiple screens that are to try to make up for the small print. Ani Ma Pech Becharara, Machzar Achareha, Lezakotba, Mina Hefker, Oh, she Tinelo, Val Habayit. So he's going back, uh, back and forth to it um, to finally acquire it. Um, well, Michal, right. Michal Zer, you could say back and forth. I'd like a better translation. You, you, you can say a man is Michazer Achara Isha. He's, he's pursuing her. Pursuing. Um, so, so, so he's so, pursuing after this, this Harara. What is a, what is a Harara? That is a good question that I don't have the answer to. I don't have my note that I wrote it down with. I don't oh. remember. All right, so open the open to anybody. I'm missing my note, so it might yeah. be like a stack of wheat. It might be a stack of wheat. That, well, that yeah. Um, what else could it be? Or it could be an a loaf of bread or something. Yeah, generally that's what I think of it as, a loaf of bread that's like being cooked on the fire. There's a story about a dog who grabs a Harara and then he lights something, I think, with the... Yeah. His, <laughs> but he, he lights a, a pile of wheat, actually, because there's a, a coal in it. This this is this is from the very beginning of Baba Kama, right? Yeah. So there's there's so the, the, a, a harara is like a lo, a lump of bread that you sort of threw the dough onto the hot coals and it got cooked and it could be still a hot coal embedded in it. It could also be a pile of wheat. I think it means like a pile of wheat that you're waiting for the owner to uh, collect and then you want to see what he leaves behind, and that'll be the you know the whatever he's abandoned and then you can take that. Right, so this is some. So the, the case here is is someone is basically a poor person is waiting, not waiting for a loaf of bread, but waiting for the leftovers. Well, it could uh, be the waiting for the leftovers of the wheat. It could also be waiting for the harara because he's like, maybe it's too hot to get it out of the coals, or maybe it's burnt up too much, and nobody he, he wants to decide if he wants to take it at all because maybe it's not even edible. Uh, he's 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 hesitating, deciding whether to take it. And then what does Rashi say? Mina hefker o lo balabayit. So he's sort of waiting around. This poor person is waiting around to either wait for the balabayit to abandon it, in which case he can collect it because it's hefker, or waiting for the the balabayit to have rahmanas on him and then say, "Here, this is yours." Exactly. Okay. Perfect. So he's in the process of trying to get something. From Hefker. Okay, Nikra Russia. Read the next Rashi. Okay. Nikra Russia means he's called a Russia if he tries to take this Harara while this Ani is like waiting around trying to decide or trying to get, you know, something like that. So he's, so you're the Chaya Havero. So he's he's go, he's sort of running down the life of his of, of his friend here. Right, he he enters into the life of his friend. He 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 interferes with the life of his friend. His friend's parnasa. He interferes with it. Okay, so that's why he's a Russia because it's this is a parnasa for the ani. I just there's a few points that I like to emphasize here. The one is that it's from the hefker, and one is that he's he's affecting the livelihood of the ani. All right, so now the tosfot. Um, 
Well, well, we'll split up the Tosfos, but Josie, why don't you start the Tosfos? I gotta go back to the previous. So we we um that that he Tosfot first brings up Rashi's point that we're working with this uh Harara shall have care. That that's the that's the sort of working principle here. And this is contra this is problematic with regards to the um what we what we have before it says if you if you, if you the mission we just learned in uh, Baba Matsya that if you if you you fall upon a um, a found item or you throw your talit across or you throw your cloak across or your talit across it and someone else and takes it from you comes up and takes it from you it's it's his why is that a kasha because why would this be a problem if you say I'm waiting for it and someone else takes it from you, it's it's yeah, it's just it's not it's not it's it's not a, it's not, it's not a direct attack to this notion. It's an attack. It's an attack to possibly calling him a Russia that we're going to come up with later. Ah, wait, 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 wait. Okay, now you just said something. Yeah, possibly calling him a Russia. So explain, explain that more. So we have this this question. You know why why would this be a problem at all? Right? You have somebody. We, we have our, our when you say we, this what do you mean okay so we have our mishnah that we have on baba messiah that we just learned that says that if somebody sort of lays you know calls dibs on an object and someone else and comes and takes it beforehand it's uh it belongs to it, it belongs to the second person the person who comes and grabs it actually well that actually fits to our gemara perfectly that's what our gemara says too right that's what i'm saying so that's so what's so the that's, question so that's so the, the the kasha is exactly why why is there a kasha here given that we have this this case like why is why would there be you know why would we call this person a russia why would there be any uh, issue why would we call him a russia here when in baba metzia we didn't call him a russia i think that's the kasha in other words why in both cases we say that it goes to the second person you know, but why over there do we say when I take away the talis and I grab the stuff, we should call him a Russia? Why should, why are we telling him go ahead and take away the talis and you can take what's underneath it? The first guy was Mehapech Baharara. He was trying to get it. You should be a Russia if you're taking it. We're, we're interested in when are you called a Russia? And it seems like you're not called a Russia in Baba Metzia, but over here you're called a Russia, and it seems like the same thing. They're both cases of people thinking about taking something and haven't yet taken it. It's true, throwing the talus, I haven't taken it, but I'm thinking about it, so I should be considered an ani me'apech becharara, and you're taking it from me, you should be a Russia. Yet the Gemara didn't say you are a Russia. So that's the kasha. And then he especially, brings another case. Especially in the case back to Baba Metzia, where we're talking about specifically things where I, we're talking about an ani coming to collect peya and things like that. Well, no, we're talking about the mission in particular. Oh, yeah, the Ani and the Peya, right. Ah, so, you, you, sorry, you're right. But we were really talking about the Metsia, actually, that the guy jumped on it. You're right, I, I, I brought in the case of the Talit. It really was the case of the guy who jumped on it, and the other guy who grabs it from underneath him, he should be a Russia because he grabbed something that somebody else was trying to acquire. He was, he was Ani Me'apech B'charara, the guy who found that, that he saw the beautiful watch on the road and he jumped on it. And now I go and grab it from underneath his belly and it's mine. And we don't call him a Russia. We should call him a Russia. Thank you for the correction. You're right. It's, 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 it's really that case. Okay, go on. Um, where we have it there. So there we even have a case where someone who tries to come and lay claims to Peya and by throwing a telly, we actually we can take it away from him. And we don't call anybody a Russia. Wait, wait, wait. No, so translate that. 
as and so and why why is uh why and so I would say why is that not like Ani Mehapech Beharara? Exactly, perfect. So and he can be called a Russia. Right. So Roma Rabbeinu Tam. So we're going to try with an answer here. Roma Rabbeinu Tam. The Yisrael Mehapech Demefech Nakat Hacha. Lo Shayach Ela Davke Shirot Kishirot Seh Ani Leherviach Bishirot. Oh Kishirot Seh Liknot Davar Acher. Devar echad. Yeah. Devar echad. I'm sorry. Devar echad. Bad screen. I'm sorry. Devar. Devar. Look now. Devar echad. The chaver makdim v'kona. V'havei dumya the Rav Gidel. So, yeah, so translate. So, 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 Rabbeinu Tam is going to answer that this this isur of mehapech. Um, I guess they're just calling it mehapech here. That um, that that we that we have here is is only appropriate in the case uh, is is inappropriate there. It's only in the case where specifically that the ani wanted to uh, the harviyat he wanted to, he wanted to make better wages. I, I'm not quite sure. I, I I had a good solid understanding of that, um, or that he wants to he wanted to acquire an, another you know. One thing he, he was looking at Larviach Basirut <laughs> means that he's like renting him his he's trying to rent himself out for a, as a day laborer at the highest possible price, and you come along maybe and underbid him and then he doesn't get the job. That's or the he, first. Yeah. or that or he wants to buy something. something. One particular thing, and somebody else comes and 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 grabs it beforehand. And that's like Dumya. The Rav Gidel's case. That's like Rav Gidel's case. So, we go on. And because of that, he's called a Rasha. Ki. Ki, lemame chazer al zot, shetarach ba chavero, yelech v'yista ker b'makom acher. So there, you see someone who's 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 busy busy there trying to uh, to pursue something, and you just kind of come in, and uh, and 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 you you uh, you you come in and basically you said underbid him. Yeah, you could swipe it up from under his nose. You, he's he's trying to buy this thing. Why did you do this? You go go go. Find a different client to hire you, or go find a different item. Why do you have to buy this item? Dafka by buying items or things that that you know people negotiate over in the purchase of them. And then he goes on. Aval. Aval im haita hachara de hefker leke isur. So if this, but we're if we're talking about somebody who's who's, who's looking at hefker. There's no such isur here. Sheim lo zacha bezot lo yimetzah So the, the, this this issue doesn't is isn't arise with hefker um, because if he doesn't get this, he's not going to find a, It's not going to find another one. We don't. We don't. Who's he? To, Who's he here? The uh, the first. This is this is the ani in this case. If, if you know if you fall upon something like this. Oh right. wait 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 no 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 so try the other no that's no you're right it's not that oh, try the other way so oh so this so this is if the if the second person comes he's not you know if it's if it's just a, a found item then it's just two people with a you know a found item of hefker right shim lo zachabazot lo yimsa acheret he's not going to find another so that, so. If I don't get this one, there's no guarantee that there's going to be some some other burning bread, wheat, sheep, coal, dog. <laughs> exactly. To... And therefore, therefore, the guy who swipes it is is or isn't a Russia. He would not be a Russia in this case. Exactly, because... he's not a Russia because he he's saying, but this is the only Harara in town. This is this is you know this is the only one. I can't get anywhere anywhere else. This is the only one in town. 
So he's not a Russia if he tries to swipe it from me. Ah, you could say, but I also say the same thing. It's the only Harara in town and I need it. But it's true. It's true. But I also have that same claim. So I'm allowed to take it. But what's, so what's the distinction? But when it's a thing that's not the only one in town, there's many people who need day workers. And there's many apartments for sale. And I've been negotiating with this seller of an apartment, and I want to buy it. And you come along and overbid me. And now you take it. And I was trying to haggle them down. Go find your own apartment. Go negotiate some other apartment. Why? There's 100 apartments for sale in Jerusalem. You have to pick mine. So this is but the if it's Hefker, I, I this is the if case it's case. Hefker, I do have to pick yours because it's the only one. It's the only Hefker in town. It's the only Hefker in town. That's what Bainu Tom's answer. What do you, that's what Bainu Tom's answer. Now, what's what's interesting about this? What's interesting about this? I think it's something very interesting. Yes, Sarah. Well, I, I just thought that it might make more sense the other way around that actually the 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 hefker is worse because there's no other if somebody comes along and takes the only hundred dollar bill on the sidewalk and that was my chance exactly you really caused me damage if it's an apartment so you I'll really find caused me apartment. damage if i could go and go negotiate with another apartment like that's some turcha for me and it's kind of unpleasant but like actually the you're right you can say there's the something you worse say, about it you can and say, i think Dafka, I... that it's a poor person like matters here. Oh, and Dafka, what about the poor person? The Rabbeinu Tom does not make any distinction, it seems. Right, he between... doesn't seem to make that distinction, but like there is something that would seem. To... I, I just, yeah. in Baba Matsya, right? I agree with you, sir. Kol echad ani legabay Matsya. Right? Oh, so exactly. I, right, we also right, that right. It, I don't know that it's literally a poor person. I think, yeah, I think when we say that, we just mean to say that. Um, in the same sense that an Ani can acquire um, Truma, but not Truma, sorry, uh, Maiser okay. Ani, so too everybody can acquire Messiah. I think that we're just trying to say that you can acquire, not that you're actually an Ani, but that, you're, that you have rights to take it. But in a sense, yeah, you have rights to take it. So I have a right to take it, but if you take it literally, I have the right to take it just as much as you. So I'll, you didn't take it yet, so I'll come and take it. Maybe, maybe Noam's a... Uh, uh, observation is, is a good one. But I had something also that I thought was interesting, which is like, what is, you know, the, the Ani Mehapek Baharara has become a, a uh, I don't know how you say this, a like turn of a phrase, a, a uh, there's another idiom. nicer, an idiom. It became a, 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 a phrase, a colloquialism, a, a statement that, and, and how far has it come, is my, my observation, says Rabbeinu Tom. How far has it drifted from its original meaning? Because ani mehapech b'charara is certainly talking about hefker. If a charara is like this dried up bread on the fire that people have abandoned, you know, it's not, it's not an apartment. It's not something that I'm trying to make money off of. In other words, sometimes it happens in language that the term, the original term, you know, a bird in the hand is worth two in the tree. People say that all the time, you know, a bird in the hand is worth two in the tree, you know, to mean better take what's, a, what's easy than, than, than try to hope for something else. But of course, the expression itself, like whoever had a bird in their hand, you know, it's not like a, it, it, we've, you know, or, you know, it's, you don't really have a bird you know, in your hand and then like the bird in the bush, or whatever. It's the phrase, well, this maybe it's a bad example, but my point is like this. The phrase originally meant there's an Ani and he wants this poor, he, this poor man wants this Hefker thing and you come and take it from it. And Rabbeinu Tom says, in that case, actually you're allowed. And in the other cases that are not an Ani Mehapech Baharara, like that are not the, literally an Ani Mepepech, but are figuratively an Ani Mepech Harara, then there's the Isser of Ani Mepech Harara. But in the actual original case of Ani Mepech Harara, the din doesn't apply. I think that's like, I was, you know, unusual. It's uh, it's bizarre almost. 
But we're, we've taken, we've gone so far from the original expression. Yeah, Jacob, what, what, do you, what do you got? I was also a bit confused by bringing the idea of Isser because maybe I was being very literal in how I was reading the idea of Habech Becharara, but there's a level that we're not necessarily saying that taking it away from him when he's buying it is violating an Isser, but you're still doing something wrong and we're going to call you out for it. Because it wasn't framed in the language of Isser. It was, and that stuck out to me. Um, no, so yeah, so you're right. Rabbein of Tom, that's also an interesting point. We've gone from just saying you're a Russia to saying it's Usser. Well, I mean, you know, anything that you're going to be a Russia for, you can't do. That we have that, you know, we have the concept. Russia is a technical term that we apply to somebody who has done something that was forbidden. It's not just like we call him a nu nu nu. We, we you know, it's not it's not uh, we 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 give him a you know cold look. He is a categorized now as a Russia, and because he did an isser. So, but you're right. Rabbeinu Tom is, is is does he use the word isser here? Yes, like isser. Right, exactly. He, he he's, he's bringing it into halakhic categories from being originally maybe just a statement of disapproval. But I agree with you. The way there, this is in the Rambam, the Rambam does too. No. Yeah, the Rambam has it. Well, the Rambam interestingly says both things, which makes me think they're not the same, right? Um, ah. Okay. Trying to find it. Da, da, da. And then the Shulchan Aruch takes it back. Yeah, and the Shulchan Aruch, right. Agree with the Rambam. Right. So it's, it's, um, Although notably, actually, I didn't notice this, Jessica, when we were talking about this yesterday, but it's actually the only, the Z, the, Asur, the language of Esor is only when he's talking about it in the marriage context and not in the other context. But it's it's the Ramam you gave us from Hilchot Yishud Park Tet, Al Hayud Zion. Um, I'm looking there. Wait a second. Uh, wait. It's in a section called Anime Mecharer, right? Mecha 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 and then Mecha 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 it's the last Rambam that you gave us there. Um, Russia. So he puts them together. It's it's Asr, and if you do it, you're a Russian. Right, but I think it's the equivalent. fact that he has to say both things means that they're not entirely equivalent. I think he's just being faithful to the Gemara. I think he's just because the Gemara called it a Russia. Yeah, but you're right. No, I think it's like more. It's more. I, I mean, yeah, it's I think usser, it's more. I think it's, it's like to eat pork. Yeah, I don't know, but I don't know if you're called a Russia if you eat pork. You know, it could be the tail. Like you, you, you know, it's between you and God. But a Russia is particularly when you're treating your other fellow man. Yeah, I mean, he's he's putting a good like. Aristotelian moral label on it. Right? Exactly, like, yes. I, I find, like, the, the shot of the Gemara is that there's actually like two different discourses. There's a legal discourse um, which says that you can make Kenyan, and there's a moral discourse which says that there's a particular case where you're wrong. Like, it mm -hmm. kind of like a case of Patur Bedine Adam Bechaya Bedine Shemaim, which comes up a lot in the Bavas. Right. Right? But the 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 interest I think that's the shot of the Gemara. But the toes foot is kind of like flattening all the discourses. It, it's it, it, it's creating this kashya saying. No, but he agrees right. that it works. I don't know. Tosus agrees that it but, works. I think they have to come up with an answer for it. But uh, the, they wouldn't have even had to ask the question if they just said these are two separate discourses. I, um, I don't understand why you're saying. I don't understand. In his question is why isn't it called a Russia over by the Mitzia? In and and he had that question and he answers because over in the case of the Mitzia in, in of jumping on a Mitzia, it's Hefker. So you're not a Russia there. But over here in the case of Giddel, you are a Russia because you you took somebody's Parnassa from him. Um I also wonder if there's something else going on that Russia really is a separate case from someone who does something that's an Isur, because we have other cases where we someone is called a Russia, and they're, but they're not necessarily doing anything absolutely forbidden. I mean, if you play dice, 
and you race or you're mafria chionim, you know, you have problems with edud. And there the term. Yeah, Russia I don't. Think, are you called a Russia there? I think you. I think you may actually be called a. Uh, but there it also. Maybe may you be, are. Maybe you are. I don't remember. It, it, we definitely puzzle edud. It, 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 but it may also be tied to, for example, for people who are Oakland the Velos or something like that. So it might actually be tied to a to an Easter. I just don't remember. Yeah, I mean, I think that there is like Hedron that talks about it. I think that there are certain Isurim that we label them as Russia and certain ones we don't. I didn't really investigate, you know, thoroughly where we do and where we don't. Um yeah, but, Sarah. But for all of these things, yeah, just, we, oh, our, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, oh, I, I just think that Noam's point still really makes a lot of of sense here that like the toast vote could have resolved this if 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 the toast vote saw as we're seeing that like there is sort of two levels of discourse here there's the legal level of like this works and then there's a kind of moral discourse in our in our Gemara and kiddushin that says this is a bad thing to do all you have to do to resolve toast votes question from baba matia is say well in baba matia we didn't have our mishnah doesn't have this moral level of discourse it's not talking about that it's only talking about whether the Kenyan works and it says it does so that's it yeah but that's no but that's exactly where we that's it's just but two our different Gemara, levels of, of way of talking and, ways of our, talking yeah yeah but I, the part of the I Gemara think don't we, see it as two levels and yeah, they see it as one and so they can't make that is one. the question but the Gemara doesn't want to do that because the beginning of our Gemara started saying well why isn't he called a, a Ramaut. Why isn't it called Ramaut over here? And it is in Perak Shani called Ramaut if you tri- if you do this tricking with this Shliach. And then we say, oh, it is called Ramaut here. It just says the word Halach, and that means Ramaut. So you see that they want, they don't want there to be different discourses. They want that all the, the Gemara itself wants that any place where something is considered a Ramaut, it should be always referred to as Ramaut. And it shouldn't be that one Gemara doesn't refer to it as Ramaut because that's not its discourse. It always should be. The Gemara itself wants to flatten it, is what I'm saying. If you, in your, in your turn. Anyway, I think it's a very fruitful conversation. Um, uh, oh, good. I'm glad to argue with Rev. Daniel Reifman. I mean, just because uh, I don't get to, I never met him and therefore I can. You didn't talk about this particular case. Ah. Like, you looked at, <laughs> Other cases in in uh, yeah, I, I, I mean you can say that, but I think I have a very good answer, uh, right, Sarah? I, th- I mean, that is that the Gemara itself is trying to say that any time we say something is a is is evil is a bad behavior, we should be consistent, and that's what Tosus is saying. And Rabbeinu Tam differentiates them in this drastic way, uh, kind of. Now, I, I also want to point out to you that the Rashi that we read, Nikra Russia. And he, Rashi said, she read Notice that he talks about it in terms of affecting the parnasa of the friend. Uh, that's the way I understand it. The chaye, I understand this is well, his livelihood, not his life, but his livelihood. And therefore, he's understanding very similar to Rabbeinu Tam that it's not just a matziah that happens, you know. You don't really need. You could do with do without, but it's rather your method, your mode of existence. You are a day laborer, or you are buying apartments and selling them, and now somebody's and you're haggling, and somebody's getting involved, and that's what Ani Bacharara Ani. He normally goes around. It's not a matzia. He's normally going around and looking for people's, you know, refuse. For people's things that they've thrown away and they don't want, and he looks for them and he tries to decide should he put this in his truck or not. And that's that's Ani Mapek Bacharara. He's looking for this old bread and is it good or not? So I think that Rashi is actually saying the same thing as Rabbeinu Tam in this way of reading it. That he's saying, Ani Mapek Bacharara, he's trying to get from Hefker true. He's, he agrees that it's from, he doesn't agree with Rabbeinu Tam in the sense that Rabbeinu Tam says it's not from Hefker. But the second Rashi, where he says the Yored Lechaye Chaviro, he views this. It's like it's like the guys who collect bottles in Jerusalem. That's their parnasa. It's true, it's hefker, but that's their parnasa. If I start taking the bottles for he's about to take them, then I went into his 
Parnassa, even though it's from Hefker. So it's similar to Rabbeinu Tam in the sense that he's worried about um, doing something that, in other words, it's not, you know, this Rashi doesn't view it as something that's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's uh, always there are these things. There's always these uh, hef- these uh, these Hefker items that you can always collect. And I don't so I don't think Rashi makes this distinction between Hefker and not. He puts it all in the category of whether it's interfering with the guy's pronunciation. And actually, that also really is more seen in the next thing that we're going to see in the Gemara in in the Tosfot, not necessarily the Rabbeinu Tam, but the next opinion. But I think it also is in Rabbeinu Tam. So so go on. Uh, wait, where were we? Um, Miyukasha, but maybe I'll let somebody else read. You did an excellent job, uh, Josie. Um, Max, uh, why don't I call on you again? Sure. Umihukasha mehahi de paraglo yachpor. The kamar hatam, marchiki min hadag, kemale reitsi tadag, apalpishahu shall have care. So, nevertheless, it seems we have a problem with this line of reasoning on the basis of what's in Parak Lo Yachpor, where it says there that we distance, we distance him from the fish in as much as it swims or something like that. Yeah, Kimele Ritzat Tadag, the distance that a fish swims or literally runs. In other words, um, if you have fishermen on the shore or at the side of a lake, each one has to have a distance between them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pisha, who shall have care? Even though oh, fish yet that's hef care. Hef care. Why do we distance? If it's hefker, Rabbeinu Tam, how can you say that it, if it's hefker is no problem? It is a problem with it's hefker. You see, here's the case of hefker fish, and I'm coming and taking it. So, so that's a kasha. Venira, Venira de hatem hayinu tama mipnesha who you read lo omanato. Oh. That's Rashi's language, exactly what I wanted to say. That's exactly Rashi's language. So he says, you're, you're, you're getting involved in his parnasa, even though it's Hefker. What I'm trying to say, actually, if, if it, is that everything that is in this Tosos is in that Rashi. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but, but but go on, go on. Or, 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 or Noam, you have something to say? No? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And then, the and then, so this is the support, I think, for that. Kihahi de kamar hatam. Hai bar mavo de oki reche. Vaata bar mavoa de oki behedia. Matsi la ak. Um, so like it's like like it talks about there, there was one who who came to um set, set up his um mill, something yeah. like that. Yeah, a little hand um, mill, maybe. And another one came and put up his. We can we are allowed to restrain the second one because we because we can say that he's interrupting the livelihood of the first one right in other words this is not the same case at all it's not hefker it's nothing to do with our case but it does teach us generally the principle that you can't interfere with other people's livelihoods and uh and maybe that's what's and maybe that's so 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 this is similar to the case of the fish and the explanation of the fish is because you're inter, you're you're obje- you're you're bothering someone's livelihood. And that's like part of the whole idea of Rabbeinu Tam, maybe, that uh, if it's a hef, if it's like a metzia, then it's unusual, then you could do it. But if it's not unusual, it's his way of living, then you can't do it. Um, go ahead. The od. The od, Omer Rabbeinu Meir, Aviv Shor Rabbeinu Tam, Demairi Bedag Met, Shechein Derech Had, what do we call that in English? Bait. Exactly. Or chum. We call it chum also. Chumming. Bait is what you put on the hook. Chumming is when you throw bits of fish into the water and you get them to come. Right. 
my brother is a fisherman in Florida, and he they spend a lot of money on chum, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to me, it seems like cheating, but that's the way you got to do it. Uh, in any case, so wait, so what's his point here? So what what is this is the father of Rabbeinu Tamar Rabbi Mayer. So this so, is so, so keep back. on keep on. He's gonna explain his point. Oh, Read on. Um, Okay, so this is this is he's explaining now the whole chumming thing. The whole the whole case of the fish. So we're talking about when we're talking about a uh, this fish, even though it's it's I guess half half well I'm not sure I understand the case. The, the fish being mentioned is actually chum and the person had already put it in their net and was using it to attract other fish. And therefore, if someone else came and made use of the same chum, it's like they were stealing from him. Right. I would use the word investment. He made an investment in his place. He set up his nets. He put in the chum. Now all the fish are, r are running to him. And I come along and start catching all the fish that are coming to you. And I say, get out of here. He said, well, this is a free country. This is uh, not your land. And I say, yes, but I've put a lot of investment into this place. And, 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 and you can't come take it from me. And I think that's, and, and that's what it means, Pasca Lechayuta, what he talked about before. Pasakta Lechayutai, Lechayuti. You interfere with my, with my livelihood because I've already invested money in it. Um, and I'm going to lose now. So he, he kind of explains that case a little bit. He explains the fish case a little bit more different from like this, the, the original mashal, the original like paradigm of the Ani collecting Harara, where he probably didn't put any money in it. But in any case, you're affecting his Parnassa, and it's not just a normal Matsya. Umikan nira. So from here we can, Rabbeinu uh, Yitzchak um, learns that it's asur for a teacher to hire himself out to a householder who already has another teacher working in, in, the, in, in, in the house for the duration that he's there. Right. Uh, um, so, because um, since he is like hiring some, himself out, he can hire himself out elsewhere. No, no, no. Since the first guy has already lay, hired himself out to this Balabayat, it's his territory. You can't you can't encroach on his territory. You can't go to, a person hires a violin teacher for his son. You can't come up to the family and say, hi, I'd like to, you need a violin teacher? I'd like to teach violin to your son. He's already got a violin. Like, you, what are you, now you're, gonna, you're taking away my job. Taking away the first violin teacher's job. Because you're encroaching on a business that's already been set up. Is this like a hasagat gvul type? Of yeah, it, it basically, this is this whole sugya that's in in uh, Baba Batra. Okay, go on. Okay. I mean, this is not in the Baba Batra. This is an extension of the Baba Batra that that Rav Yitzhak is making. Okay. Um... Unless the Baal Habayit says that he's not intending to retain the Milamed. Nicely said. Um, okay. 
אבל אם שכר בעל הבית מלמד אחד, יכול בעל הבית אחר לשכור אותו מלמד עצמו. But um, if the first בעל הבית had retained the מלמד, another בעל הבית is in fact allowed to retain him also. Right, that's not a problem. You see, this is like the reverse case now, right? Now we're saying, just because I'm working for you, I can't say, you can't hire my maid. I've took me years to find this maid, and now you're hiring her for another two hours. She'll be tired when she comes to me. I, you know, I don't want you to hire her. No, you can't do that, because th that's not, I'm not interfering with your parnasa. I'm just interfering with your service that you don't have, maybe. You won't get his best service, but I can hire her away from you. I could even give her more money and say, come over to work for me. Because I'm not interfering with the, the maid or the, the teacher's parnasa. I'm improving the teacher's parnasa. I'm interfering with the balabaya. The balabaya, it's not his parnasa. It's just that he doesn't like this. Ve'enu yachol. Ve'enu yachol amarlo habal habaya. Lech uskor melamed acher. T'nei malei en ritzoni ela lezeh. He's asking, you can't say to the, you can't say, go find yourself your own teacher. Because maybe I'll say, I like this teacher. So actually it comes out that this is this idea of go find another business or go find another teacher becomes the main point. You know, as Rabbeinu Tom is saying that the claim, that the claim in general is go find another one. Why are you coming and grabbing mine? Right? That's why you're a Russia. Because you're coming grabbing my apartment that I was made negotiating over or or uh, my item that I was haggling over. Go find your own one. Why are you taking mine? But if the other guy could answer and say, but there aren't any other deals. There is no other deal. There is, then my claim of go find your own goes away. And then he's not a Russia for taking it. If I say, oh, there are no other deals. So... Uh, for example, in the last case here, if, if, if I say there is no other, every malamed is different. Every person is unique. Uh, and I want this person. So there is no, he's, he became a metzia. This, this teacher is a metzia. Um, every person is a metzia. And so I can't claim, oh, go find your own. I think that's the main point of Urbana time is he's saying, as long as I can say, go find another one, why are you taking, why are you encroaching on my business? Then you're a rush, then you're a Russian. But if I can't say that legitimately because it's a Matsya, then I'm not a Russian. Now it's true that Urbana time seems to differentiate between Hefker and not Hefker. Um, and therefore the fish became a problem. But I think that through the Tosfos, he kind of veered off. I mean, through, I mean, it's not Rabbeinu Tam, it's also Rabbeinu Yitzchak and Rabbeinu Meir. I think that eventually they come to the kind of conclusion that it's not really just a din of Hefker. It's a din of what I was saying, of like how likely it is. Hefker is just like a, a it's, it's really a din of how likely it is that I can find it. And Hefker is sort of, in Rabbeinu Tam's view, synonymous with saying, um, uh, well, Rabbeinu Tam is a little bit different. I don't know, I'm trying to think about it. Rabbeinu Tam is a little bit different. He's saying, if it's Hefker, then, then uh, it's a Messiah by definition, and therefore you can't prevent me from taking it. Uh, but then we brought the case of the fish that seems to go against him and seeing that the, the criteria is not necessarily Hefker. It's more a question of uh, whether this is you, whether I can tell you go away and you can't answer me back, but I have no other choice. It's interesting that Rabbi Yitzchak's examples the Malamed when the Sugya and Baba Batra actually explicitly rules the other way about Malamdin. Yeah, so how do you explain that? I don't, I think it's really weird. <laughs> Um, like I think the examples we're dealing with here of the fish and the women we're getting who are being betrothed and the hefker and the teachers are actually all extremely different from each other and it's really interesting that they map get them onto each other. Right, there are all these different cases. I wrote down like a list of all the different cases. 
Where exactly? And in terms right. of like the amount of agency everyone has and the amount of power and the amount of scarcity, you know, it's it's very different. I, I was going to ask, is there like an underlying current of, of an undiscussed question of scarcity versus plenty? Like, we, you know, with, with, with Mitsia, we always had this question of, well, the reason we're fighting over it is because I can't necessarily go out and get another one. And we had this, we had the, the, the contrast with Mecca Kumemkar where you could just go to another store and buy another thing. But with the Mitsia, you know, you don't always find that, 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 you know, that, uh, you know, fancy rock on the ground or something like that. You're not is really it, saying scarcity, it, you're saying uniqueness, I think. Not even uniqueness, but scarcity. There, there may be multiple, you know, there may be many other rocks that this is mine, or the scarcity of Paya is there, you know, it might be a long walk for me to get to the next field, or there may not be that many fields, or there could have been even, you know, a, a, a low yield this year, and so the Paya could be really scarce. So is there quite, I mean, it's not the only question, is there and it just is it sort of remaining unaddressed as one of these things that we haven't really spoken about? You know, well, Rabbeinu Tom would say that the that the paya is just it's really strictly speaking a question of hefker and the paya is hefker, so you're not a Russia and the metzia is hefker, so you're not a Russia. But here the case of Rav Gidel is not hefker. Is a is a there's. A, there's a, there's a seller and a buyer, and it's owned all the time. And there's many apartments. And and, and no, I, I had many apartments. It's not Hefker, and therefore you can go and find another one. I mean, Robert Vaynerchuk does sort of add in this idea of uniqueness of, of like of how common it is, because I guess he understands that things that are Hefker are rare. And my answer, to, and, and then my answer to Robert Vaynerchuk is kind of, well, not always. Sometimes Hefker things are common. If, if, if you're living in a society where everyone does paya, then maybe at a certain time of the year, it's very common, these paya, the, these uh, hefker things. And if you're living in, uh, and if people are cooking outdoors and bread like the way they did, maybe it's very common. Rabbeinu Tam strictly is almost like a technical analysis. If it's hefker, then it's not. And it's I just think it's absurd almost because the original case of Harara, Ani Mapech Harara, which is a Russia, person who, who takes it as a Russia, is for sure a case of Hefker, and yet he defines it out of existence. Uh, and therefore, I like the later part of the of the Tosis, how it goes, that saying that it's more a question of uh, what kind of claim I can say. Can I say, go find your own? And that means it depends on how common it is. Um, we, we just You're saying the original case of anima that Harara is definitely... Yeah, just he's like definitely the, hefker and is definitely like, and it, well is he also started off by saying that, it's not hefker right Jasho, if i remember correctly like they noted one of the definitions for mapech could be like the bargain over it could be like a poor person is negotiating over something at the marketplace like, i think what right, I, I think i think what that uh that is um i think what he means is that's the figurative use of the term maybe and the literal, but the literal meaning is still, um, yeah. that's what I'm, that's exactly my point. It's like flipping. That's exactly my point. That's Tosus's answer. That's Tosus's explanation. The figurative meaning has drifted far from the original literal meaning, is what I'm saying. And, yeah. and, in, and, in, the, and in the way that Rabbeinu Tam views it, it has become the opposite of the original literal meaning. And I found that to be cute. I would call, I would call it cute. It's, 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 to me, that's, a curiosity and an interesting curiosity um we just got to look just i know we're out of time but we, we i really would like to look at the shulchan aruch if we have a couple minutes um the shulchan aruch summarizes all really the ramah does um here noam you want to just read quickly the shulchan aruch Sure, this is, I'm talking Sif Aleph of Simon uh, Reish Lamed Zion. Okay. Um, ha mechazer achar davar liknet o u lesachro, bein karka, bein metaltalim, uva achar vekan o nikra rasha. 
So one who's pursuing something. Well, um, I'll translate it. You just, you'll read and I'll translate it. <laughs> it just means that, like we said, that's Rabbeinu Tam. It's talking Dafka about things that are not Hefker. You're called a Russia. Uh, right. A day laborer also. Go on. Uh, right. That's Rabbeinu Tam. And it is Yesh Omrim. But that means, and now, now, uh, skip to the, uh, skip this little piece of green, uh, here, of, then in dark here I have, V'yesh Omrim de Loshna. In other words, yesh um, de loshna. Fine, that's maybe Rashi, maybe Rashi, but whatever. In other words, and that's the way the Shulchan Aruch's that this whole Hefker thing is irrelevant. It's it's you're also called a Russia, even if it's Hefker. Now look at the look at the Haga. Uh, Haga, the Svara Rishon, ah, Nira Ikar. Uh, the Afilule Svara Zo, Davka Be Ani. So now we have a new idea. First of all, he says like this It's true that the Hefker is not relevant. Even if you're taking from Hefker, you're called a Russia. But that's only if the guy is an Ani. About that, she allowed. If he's a rich guy and he just saw a diamond and you take it from him, no problem. If he's a rich guy, he's got three apartments and he's haggling over a fourth one, you can jump in. Uh, another proviso. If it's an unusual thing, it's a real metzia, it's a diamond, let's say, then I am called a Russia. But if it's an apartment, not called a Russia. Um, and then just read on. The Kolze. Uh, the, I just lost my face, sorry. The Kolze lo mairi ela she akshe kvar pasku adam im she beinehem ve ein mechusrin uh, oh, so he says, he says, even if they're negotiating over an apartment, as long as they have still negotiating, they haven't actually given the money over. You could jump in, even if he is an ani. Even if he's an ani, so that sort of changes everything. I don't know how he learned that in the Gemara, but fine. That's how he learned the Gemara. Didn't mention that, but he, he understood it that way. Now is um the Yesh Misha Kasav. The Yesh Misha Katav Shu Kherim uh Rabbeinu Gershom. Rabbeinu Gershom. Uh Shalola si Gvul Besehirut Batim Min Akum Huadin Bemakam Shana Guli score Ahal Va Min Akum. So he says this is very interesting also. This is saying this is an a uh, a very unknown Rabbeinu Gershom, uh, it's just a Yesh Omri, Yesh Misha Katav, that there's a Cherem Rabbeinu Gershom to do what? That you, that I am trying to haggle down a price of a, of a goy for an apartment, and I haven't yet bought it. You can't come along 
and interfere with my haggling and offering him a higher price. By a Jew, you could. But by an Akim, you can't. Because you're inter like, because the we want the Jewish people to be, you know, you want to help your Jew, your fellow Jew. You don't want to undermine your fellow Jew and, and, and make the goy get more money and the Jew loses out. But you can only, but that's only a law in places where you can't take rebate from an Andrew. Is that what I'm saying? Oh, no, no, no. No, then he goes on and he says, oh, I think I, he means to say, I, it, I, I, I don't think he says, I think he means, and also another case, when you yeah. when you lend money from the goy, when you borrow money from the goy, you can't go and say to the goy and say, "I'll offer, I'll give you better interest if you give me the money." You know, the goy is trying is offering. I'm going to borrow, borrow money from you at five percent, and you come saying to the goy, "I'll give you six percent if you give me the money." And then the goy, and then I'll have to say, and the first guy will have to say seven percent. And we're bidding up each other, and the guy is is benefiting. That also is usur, according to Rabbeinu Gershom. It, I never heard of this before, until I saw this siman. Is it weird? I mean, this is a very, um, you know, don't let this get into the hands of the wrong parties. This doesn't make the Jews look so good, but it seems to be saying that you can, uh, you shouldn't inter. I mean, it's not really bad. You're not doing anything wrong. You're just not. Inter you shouldn't interfere with another Jew who is negotiating with a guy about a purchase of land or of money. I don't know if it, which provisos, if this is within the case that he's rich or I don't, you know, I don't know how it all works out. Anyway, Shikoyach, um, everybody. Uh, I think we got a lot done and that's good. Uh, next week, uh, well, I didn't assign anyone the Gemara, so I'll do the Gemara, but you guys will be doing the Tosfot. And you should all prepare all the Tosfos, I guess, really, you know, because we're going to learn them all. Okay. Uh, Laila Tov. Ah, yeah, Mazatov. Mazatov. <laughs>